Speaking of JJ Hadley, we are going to look at some of the numbers. There was a story in CBS Sports just a couple of days ago, and they were ranking the quarterbacks. And I went over there and I saw JJ, and I thought, well, okay, wow, are, are these? And I was looking at the eight quarterbacks in front of them. And I thought, are there really eight quarterbacks that are better than JJ McCarthy? No, I didn't think so. And then I saw some of the names, and I don't know, three or four of the guys, you know, I'd heard of most of them, if not all of them, but I hadn't watched all of them play. But they just, this really wasn't uh, subjective. They were specifically using a metric, specifically ESPN's QBR metric. And if you use just ESPN's QBR metric, you will see that Jalen Daniels, Got banged up last year for Kansas, but, you know, had the Jayhawks actually talked about on the football field. He led college football in QBR, followed by Bo Nick from Oregon, the Heisman Trophy winner, Caleb Williams, uh, Jordan Travis, who when you look at metrics and rankings, he's always flashing in those. Cam Rising, the uh, long-haired, mustached gunslinger from Utah coming off the knee injury, was fifth in QBR last year. Oh, everybody's smitten with old Drake May from North Carolina. Not me so much, but, I, you know, I got to watch a lot more of him. I, I talk a lot of trash about him, but I haven't watched a whole, you know. Uh, the, the gurus love Drake May. I mean, they love him. Uh, he's sixth. Michael Penix Jr., I do love him. The Southpaw from Washington. Frank Harris from Texas, San Antonio, and then J.J. McCarthy. So McCarthy was top 10, a returning quarterback in QBR. So, But is he, would you rank him ninth? You remember, and I think I, I sounded very homerish. I knew when I was saying it that I sounded that way, but it was what I believed, so I went with it. And it was after the season I started talking about returning quarterbacks. And, I, you know, I was, would I take anybody else in the country over J.J. McCarthy? And I thought, you know, Caleb Williams, I mean, he's a pretty talented quarterback, you know, won the Heisman Trophy. Yes, I would take Caleb Williams over J.J. McCarthy. But I didn't pick anybody else. And that's what had me, you know, people were like, wow, pretty high on J.J. McCarthy. And then. And then, you know, you start seeing people, you know, rank the QBs and everything else. And, and I hadn't seen anybody really have JJ as high as me. Now, you you can look through. There's a lot of different metrics out there, expected uh, offense, uh, EPA, all these different things. And, of course, there's there's pro football focus. And for a lot of people, especially if you, you know, you're paying the money for pro football focus, it's not cheap. And they put up, you know, they put a ton of research. You know, they got people evaluating each and every play. I don't need to go into it. You know, pro football focus. Everybody's looking at the grades on pro football focus. Pro football focus hated J.J. McCarthy and what he brought to the table last year. I put a a graph up from pro football focus, and I'm going to read it. It's really small to begin with. I'm going to have to put my glasses on to look at it. And, of course, if you're reading the pod, or listening to the pod, you won't be able to read it. But it's their breakdown, their extensive breakdown of quarterbacks from last year. And some of the big names, like Jordan Travis from Florida State and Caleb Williams, they were ranked in the top five last year by Pro Football Focus, an over one, an, an overall grade of 91.7. That makes those guys elite in their grades for pro football focus for last year. There's the old Drake May. He had a great grade. He was in the top 10. Bryce Young, the number one pick in the NFL draft, was a, a top 10. He had a great uh, grade by pro football focus. Not a surprise. But I was going down. I'm like, well, is JJ going to be in the top 25? No, top 50. And once I got to the top 75, I'm like, I must have missed him. And I went back, and I'm like, I don't see JJ. I don't see JJ. JJ doesn't appear on the pro football focus until 98. He was tied for 98 with a 77.7 grade last year. Now, you know, his completion percentage, we know, was not fantastic. I don't know, you know, they graded him down maybe for those, you know, two pick sixes, maybe as the game went bigger, you know, they get the pass, run, 
uh, different other uh, metrics here uh, that they go through snaps and everything else, but I, everything put together, I thought, wow, 98 for JJ. That doesn't seem right to me. And then I thought, maybe I am a homer. Maybe it's just, it's, you know, I, I watched Caleb Williams, you know, not every game. And like I said, I watched a little bit of Drake May. He wasn't winning any big games, but you see the highlights, you see how they throw the ball. And I thought, man, I like JJ still number two. And then this week, I mentioned the athletic. Dane Brugler is their NFL draft guy. And Brugler, he put up just this week who he thought were the top 10 quarterbacks uh, heading into the year geared towards the NFL draft. And Brugler. Picked Caleb Williams. I think you're going to be shocked by that. And he he pointed out what he thought was his best trait. He said, poised playmaking. Caleb Williams, number one. Number two, Drake May from North Carolina. Yeah, he gives me Mitch Trubisky vibes and, you know, hasn't won a big game. But the gurus and Brugler being one of those, they just love themselves to May. High-level passing traits, he says. And he pointed out, Brugler, about how everybody's comparing him to Justin Herbert, the Chargers quarterback. And he said there's a definite line between the quarterbacks and the NFL draft, between Williams and May, and then it's like everyone else. Having said that, he went out there and picked J.J. McCarthy at number three in his summer 24 NFL draft list. He's got McCarthy. He said his best trait is that he's got an intriguing toolbox. Ooh, but that, you know, open up the toolbox and look in there. I'm intrigued. Yeah, he does have, I, I know what he's talking about with his uh, intriguing toolbox. And in, uh, in the story, he said he must improve precise ball placement. I, I think that we all, you know, know JJ. I think we know what he's talking about there. You know, I, I would think specifically on the deep ball for sure. You know, didn't start really even making catchable throws on the deep balls until the Ohio State game into the, you know, second half of the second quarter. And then, then things kind of took off and, you know, he started making more of those throws and putting them on the receivers. But he even talked about some of the intermediate throws that, you know, he could do better with ball placement. And now, you know, I'm going to be taking a look at that as I rewatch some games as I go through over the next couple of days, Michigan have the ball here. No, they're on defense. All right. So that made me feel a little bit better, at least about where, you know, what I was thinking about with, uh, with JJ. 